The science of consciousness. What is that? How do you define the science of consciousness? Well, to do that, some other things need to be defined. Namely, mind, spirituality, religion, and science. First, mind. What is mind? Simply put, mind is consciousness. Not brain, not body, not internal or external world. Consciousness. This is your input point. The connection that is allowing the perception, independent of anything that is perceived or associated as self. So what then is spirituality? Spirituality is an exploration of mind, the study of consciousness, an observational investigation into the connection point. That is the true definition of spirituality. Unfortunately, the words spirituality and spiritual have been tarnished and smudged by religion. Religion has taken the word spirituality and held it hostage. They've taken the word spirituality, overused it, bent it, twisted it, and to now it means a belief in religion. And this is totally absurd, because religion is against everything that the exploration of consciousness and mind through observation is all about. And so what is religion? Religion is blind faith, blind adherence to dogma, despite what is observed. And that is a clear distinction between spirituality and religion. Adherence to dogma is letting the external govern and tell you what you're observing. In contrast to spirituality, which through observational exploration, you gain the Dharma. Dharma being the observable truths of observation. Dogma is old, corrupted, inconsequential data. Dharma is the current, consequential data, and the data collected through observational exploration gives us the definition of science. Science is truths that have been established based on observational exploration. But true science can only be what is currently consequential. But one must be careful with science, because it can also become like a dogma. Observational truth within a context of constant change ultimately become untruths. So you always have to verify the data. Never mind what all pre-existing and pre-established things are telling you. You have to verify it yourself. Because any and all data collected is subject to change. And this is what establishes the distinction between the observable material and what is observing. Which brings us to the distinction between science and spirituality. Science deals with the observable truths of what's being observed. Spirituality deals with the observable truths of the observation process. But since the word spirituality has been marred and taken over by religion, there really needs to be a new term for spirituality, which really could be called the science of consciousness. This seems to be a title that Westerners would be more comfortable embracing, because the science of consciousness already exists as Buddhism, but since Buddhism is viewed as foreign, then perhaps the science of consciousness would be better suited. The only other thing that we've had close to it in the West is what is called New Age. The problem with New Age is it doesn't know what it wants to be, doesn't even have a true identifiable form. There is no such thing as New Age religion. There are old world religions, they are all organized, they each have their holy book, they all have certain rituals and practices that they fulfill. But there is no New Age religion that you can point to that encompasses such things. All of these things that have been listed as facets of the New Age religion, clairvoyance, ESP, ghosts, 
mediums, fortune tellers, astrology, crystals, alternative healers, astral travel. All of these things are new age conceptions, individual forms of perhaps new age thinking, but you cannot heap them all together and then call that a new age religion. All of these things and many others are not unified. A lot of them are incongruent, they don't gel, and in some cases they just flat out disagree with one another. But we really don't need a new age religion because we already have Buddhism. And Buddhism is not a religion. It is spirituality itself. It is the science of consciousness itself. Not to say that one cannot become a religious Buddhist. One can. But religious Buddhists are not real Buddhists. Buddhism is the science of consciousness. Truth that is established by current observation. But one must always observe for themselves. Constant verifications of ever-changing truths through totally unbiased observation. Faith has got nothing to do with it. Even in Buddhism, if you blindly adhere to observational truths without observing for yourself, you are falling prey again to dogma. Buddhist teachings are tools to aid an unbiased observer in their exploration of constant change. The tools are there for you to utilize, not blindly adhere to. Take responsibility for this piece of consciousness that is in your control and explore it and actually use the tools that will aid you in this quest. It's not enough to just recognize that those tools exist. You have to actually utilize them. So Buddhism has no place for religion. There is no place for faith in Buddhism. It goes against everything Buddhism is about. And what's funny is that a lot of practices from Buddhism get heaped onto the New Age pile. Things like meditation, fasting, yoga. And that's a shame because it gives these elements of Buddhism a bad name. Lack of unity is one of the reasons why the New Age movement is not taken seriously. It doesn't have a backbone, which is why, like I said, we already have Buddhism. But if you need a Western version, then it needs to be unified under one common theme. Once unified under a common theme, all the little individual expressions of New Age thinking will fall into place. If the New Age movement were to unite, for the pursuit of current truths established through observation and exploration of both observing and observed, then it would have some substance. And if it's going to have any legitimacy as something enlightened, wise, or of elevated consciousness, in tune with something higher, tapped into the unknown, then it has to be built on the foundation of detachment from desire. Desire can hinder or prevent the process of exploration and observation. What we are essentially here to do. And this is where the West hits a stumbling block. This is why the West would rather embrace the old world religions. And that's because it leaves room open for indulging in desire. Oh, the passion. There's just so much passion. This is why people can look past the inconsistencies, the myths and the fairy tales, the hypocrisy, the contradictions. And that's because the satisfaction of desire is in full effect. There's just so much passion. Oh, the passion. The passion. And to lend some credibility to it, they throw a little morals and virtues into the mix. Being selfless, being giving. But these things are also motivated by desire. Do good and you're going to be rewarded or go to heaven. This is desire. And no, desire is not good. You cannot make an argument for desire. Desire hinders the science of consciousness. When we succumb to desire, we have given up on our exploratory observational journey. 
and therefore have fallen back into faith. Faith is a trap. It concretes us. And people are engaged in it without even realizing they're engaged in it. And it goes way beyond just religion. It applies to your whole conscious experience. Anytime you let the external tell you the way things are, and you accept this external explanation, this is faith. And faith in the external explanations is what keeps you locked in place. These are the chains that need to be broken. The shackle that needs to be shattered. You must question and verify everything. And you're going to have opponents in this quest. Hurdles that you must get over. And these are parents, teachers, authority figures, God, and yourself.